This week, we're going to talk about some major themes in anatomy and physiology that will come up all through the semester. And I want to start this by talking about what defines life, what requirements for life are, and use that as a framework to talk about what processes life, um, and human life specifically, will get to, needs to carry out. This is going to relate to um, all kinds of important themes like organ systems, um, homeostasis, organization, etc. So let's talk about what life is. Um, just so you know, there are different definitions of how people define life. Um, this is going to be kind of the most common, and it's also things that, that will apply to humans, so that's convenient. The debate comes down to like, are viruses alive? Um, our first requirement is going to be composed of cells would say that viruses are not alive. Some, some biologists and virologists would argue that they are. So compo composed of cells is a requirement that, that most people use to define life. Um, there's things that go along with that that we'll talk about. A cell can be a single bacterium. So here's a single cell with some DNA in it, ugly DNA or it could be a specialized cell, um, a multicellular organism that has many different cell types. Humans are gonna have this, so we'll talk about different cell types and what their functions are. Um, but at this point, we're gonna talk about things with cells, because that's a requirement for, for life. The other thing that life is, is organized. So organization, and I know it doesn't seem like it maybe, but life is organized. Um, what this means is maintaining boundaries. There's usually inside and outside. There is an inside and outside of the body. This could be just a cell membrane or bacterium. For a human, it's going to look a lot more complicated. Another example of a boundary would be skin. Um, but inside our skin, we've got different organ systems, a lot of different membranes that are, that are organized. And this is really important for controlling what's outside versus what's inside. And then also maybe what's here versus what's there. So different compartments of fluids um, inside the cell, outside the cell, having those boundaries is really important for maintaining our body's functioning. Number three, respond to the environment. This could be pretty simple in terms of what a bacteria might need to do, but it would still do it. Um, sensing something in the environment and responding appropriately to that thing, hopefully. This also is going to include things like movement for organisms that can move. So responding to the environment is going to involve our, our nervous system. And then here we've got some skeletal and muscular systems also involved in responding to the environment for um, most animals. Okay, next we've got growth and development. So this is right development over time. Life is actually a process. Um, so if you take some of your blood out, for example, your blood has cells in it, red blood cells, white blood cells. Um, so it meets this requirement, but it's not alive. It, it can't grow and develop to change over time. Um, yeah. All right, reproduction. Life needs to be able to reproduce. For a bacterium, this is just cell division. Our bodies do this too. For sexual species, or even some asexual species that are multicellular, the process looks different. Um, so here is an example of cell division or cell replication, which is how bacteria reproduce, and our cells do this in our bodies, actually for us, in order for us to grow and develop. Um, reproduction of in terms of making future generations for humans and many other animals is going to involve special organ systems, reproductive organ systems, specialized structures to be able to do that. Either way, life's gotta be able to reproduce. All right, next, metabolism. What is metabolism? This is all the chemical processes in your body. It's that simple, that's what metabolism is. Um, so energy production from nutrients to produce ATP, just energy, um, excretion of waste, 
all the body processes in, required for growth and development, responding to the environment, all require metabolism. So metabolic function. And lastly, my favorite is regulate. All the body systems um, need to be regulated. So this is maintaining homeostasis, uh, maintaining a stable environment. Where? Well, inside this organism, internal environment. Since it does have a boundary separated from the external environment, we got to be able to regulate it, um, even when the external environment changes, right? So if nutrient availability, temperature, in Wisconsin, we've got a lot of pretty big variability in temperature, our bodies have to be able to maintain our body temperature the same, even when external environment is changing. Hopefully, it doesn't happen, you have problems. We'll talk a lot about homeostasis. So this is a framework for some processes and structural things our bodies need to be able to do um, that apply to human life. One more thing I want to talk about in terms of like a theme of life is that um, evolution. So along with growth, growth and development and reproduction is the fact that there's variability, variability in different individuals and then over time. And this biological variation, whether it's in each shape, um, all these different dogs, which obviously is partially due to artificial selection by humans. Humans, so here's two examples of human variability, skin color, body size, all kinds of variable traits um, that create a variety of different phenotypes in one species. And this variation is what allows for evolution. Um, this is what has allowed humans to evolve in the first place with biologic variation. One thing about anatomy and physiology is we will kind of ignore biologic variation. Um, when we're reading our textbook and we're talking about normal blood pressure, normal heart rate, um, it, right, normal uh, healthy ranges, um, et cetera, most of the data we have in terms of what's normal and what we're looking at, who do you think that's from? What, what data is it from? It's a human. Um, it is typically from, oops, about 150 pound white male. So here is the um, lack of variation that we're kind of going to, to consider as our main um, in, in this course. We will sometimes look at sex differences. So women and men, um, you know, development, you look at the kids, but I just want you to be aware of that um, and moving on, especially if you're interested in a health field or exercise field, that biological variation actually is super important 